So, the next thing I want to work on is getting the mounts for the electric motor connected to the beginnings of the frame. Now, I do want to make this to where we can adjust it back and forth to mainly adjust the tension between the chain going from the pedals to the electric motor. So, I'm just going to make it to where we can slide it back and forth and where we can lock it in place. So, also, I do want to mount this as far back as possible, but we can't go too far back because the pedals have to clear this and everything, so we need to figure out how far we can move back without the paddles hitting it, and we need to make sure that these sprockets are perfectly aligned. Alright, so we got the chain tensioners. These turned out pretty cool, as well as the actual parts that's going to be part of the frame. So, let's, uh, let's put this stuff together, and then we have to get this thing perfectly aligned. We have to get this sprocket perfectly aligned with this sprocket. We just have to see how far back we can push this thing without the pedals hitting this, as well as uh, making sure that this is a good height. I think this is a pretty good height. It's pretty much level with the pedals, so I think, it's, I think it'll be fine. Then we just simply need to connect these to the hub.
This thing kind of looks like something from Star Wars. Look at that. So the motor is mounted. Uh, it's almost perfectly in the center. I really tried to make it to where these sprockets are perfectly aligned, but that made it to where the motor's a little bit further this way. So I kind of made it to where the pedals have equal distance uh, on either side, and the chain is, is not perfectly aligned. It's off by just a little bit, but it's really not gonna matter. It's bicycle chain, it's, it'll be fine. But uh, main thing is the pedals are able to spin. There's equal distance between here and here as well as plenty of room for, uh, for the studs of the electric motor, as well as being able to move back and forth to tension the chain here and here. So, now, next thing is let's start working on figuring out where the front tire is going to go. Well, let's take the front tire and front forks off the mountain bike frame, kind of place them here, figure out where it where needs to go, figure out the angle that the front forks need to be, as well as mainly we got to figure out how we're going to connect the front forks to the frame while making it to where we have a place to put the battery. Now I do have to make a new uh, a new neck of the frame. I guess that's what this is called. I'm not really sure what this is called. I'm calling it the neck. Now because I uh, I just punched out these these basically just press in here. These are what uh, the bearings ride up against. So we just have to make a new one out of steel because this is aluminum. But and we're building a steel frame. Now the only tubing I have that is proper inner diameter and outer diameter for me to machine this. So therefore this double fit on here is this. This is really thick wall tubing, but this is all the stuff I have that has proper inner diameter where I can machine it to get this stuff to fit. So I'll just, I'll take as much material off this as possible to try and uh, lighten this thing up.
Alright, so we need to move this thing back a bit to make room for the front tire. Now we just have to figure out how to hold this thing in place and what angle this needs to be at. So this is my mountain bike that I've had for years and years. I love this thing. I've been riding it for years and years now. We're going to be using this to copy the dimensions that we need, mainly just the, the, the angle of the front forks. We need to know that, as well as the seat location relative to the pedals and the handlebars. So we're just going to be using this to kind of copy the dimensions uh, and try to copy it for the one we're building. All right, the first dimension we need is the angle of these front forks. It's about 66, 67 degrees. Right, like 66 and a half. So I'm trying to figure out how to connect the frame from here up to here. We obviously want it to where it kind of bends a little bit right here to where it's a little bit more flat and then bends back up to here because we do have to put the, uh, we do have to put the battery right here. So we want to make it to where the battery goes a little bit lower and everything. Now, the easiest way of doing this would be just using one inch and a quarter piece of tubing. Just go from here, bend right here and then bend it back up to here. Simple, two bends, very simple to do, but that really doesn't make it to where it's safe for the battery. The battery's gonna be kind of, the edges of the battery is gonna be kind of exposed and you know vulnerable in case we crash this thing. So the better way of doing this, but the way more challenging way of doing this would be using two one inch pieces of tubing that start from here that bend out as well as down a little bit to be parallel as well as a little bit wider than the battery. So therefore the battery kind of just sits on top of here and the edges are protected and then bend it back up to here and then meet in the middle and everything. That'd be the better way of doing this, but it's a little bit more challenging because there's, there's bends, there's angles, you know, they have to be parallel here, then they have to kind of meet back up in here as well as down here. So it's going to be a bit more challenging to do that as well as we have to make sure that they're level and parallel and everything. So part of me just wants to do the easy way, just use one inch and a quarter piece of tubing, just connect there to there, simple, done. Uh, but it's just, it's not better in the long run. It's the it's easy way of doing it, it's the lazy way of doing it. So let's, let's do it the better way. Let's do two one inch pieces of tubing, having going from here to here, and make it to where it protects the battery a lot better. So I found the easiest way to line something up is with your eyeball. You just gotta look at it from like this side, look at it from this side, it's like is this distance the same on this side as, as, as it is on this side, does it look level, does this, you know, are the distances the same and everything, and I, I, that's the way that I found to be the best way to line up something perfectly, just use your eyeball to, uh, to line it up.
This thing is finally starting to look like something. Now, I, I did cheat, technically, making this, cutting it into two different pieces, but that made it just a heck of a lot easier to do this because when you have tubing like this, that not only has to bend up and bend down, but they also have to bend in, and they're doing it in, and they're doing that in two separate spots. Trying to do that in one piece, it's a little challenging because it involves what angle do I need to bend it, and not just you know, it's just it's more challenging. So cutting it into two different two separate pieces just made it a heck of a lot easier to do. That way I could you know mess around with it and figure out. Uh, it was just a lot easier. So now, next thing I want to work on is figuring out where the seat is going to go and how we're attaching that to the frame. Now, it turns out the only tubing I have that it, that has an inner diameter that is not too big or too small, so therefore we can machine this to have this slide in here perfectly, is this really thick tubing that I had to uh, use to make the neck of the frame. I don't really have any other tubing that's uh, that isn't either too big or too small with the inner diameter, so we're just going to have to somehow machine the center of this to be perfect, uh, perfect diameter, so therefore this slides in here, I'll cut a slit in here, and then use the clamp that all bicycles, all mountain bikes have, so therefore we can uh, raise and lower the seat and then clamp it on there, and then we'll use this to, uh, to mount the seat. So uh, let's figure out how to machine this thing. It's a lot of stick out on this tool, but I think it'll do it. Hopefully. That inverter is insanely obnoxious. Alright, I gotta let this thing cool down. This thing is really hot. I gotta let this thing cool down.
All right, so we got the uh, tubing for the seat finished. We just got to have to figure out where it's going and the height and everything, the angle. This was a lot of machining, but I eventually, eventually was able to get it. But uh, now, I guess that's it for this video. Uh, we got a pretty good amount of work done. You know, th this was actually the hard part. Re trying to figure out where everything's going. Now that we have the motor placement, got that figured out. We got the pedal placement figured out. We got the hardest part was getting the front forks uh, tacked onto the frame, figuring out where those are going, the angle, and making sure that everything's in a perfect straight line. And I spent, then I spent hours, you know, double checking, making sure that everything was level and in a straight line. These tires are perfectly, you know, level and everything with each other. So it's a, that was the hard part. Now that we're that, now that we got that done. Now it's just figuring out where exactly we're putting the battery right on here and figuring out how we're mounting it in the frame. We're probably going to mount the controller right under here. There's like a perfect spot for it. We're also definitely going to have to shorten this. This is, this is way too long. So anyway, next video we will get the seat installed. We'll figure out how we're connecting, you know, the, the going from here up to the seat because we got to go around the shock. And then uh, we got to go up to here and strengthen everything. We got to strengthen the motor mounts and all that. Then once the frame's done and welded together, then we can start working on hooking everything up and getting the brakes, the gear shifters installed, getting the chain installed, and uh, wiring this thing up for the first time. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm starting to get excited for this thing. I think it's gonna it's turning out awesome. This thing kind of looks like a trials bike right now, but hopefully that'll change once it's uh it'll definitely change once it's finished. I just, I just hope that it still kind of resembles a mountain bike when it's done. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you uh, in the next video.